and keep them in good health and watch over them because no other church has ever shared, taught us deep things as in this church and even uh, though my exhortation is a simple uh, short exhortation because I know the man of God is there to teach us the deeper things and I give all glory and honor to God to be in a church like this and for the servants of God. <clears throat> uh, last week uh, Brother Augustine uh, shared uh, and told us about faith. So there is faith, hope, peace, and joy. Uh, in my school, um, there were uh, four sisters uh, of one family, and their parents, because they were Catholics, their parents named them Faith, Hope, uh, Peace, and Joy. And actually, uh, yeah, Peace, uh, her, her name was Dagma, but we never called her Peace, we called her Dagma, she was my classmate. So when I uh, was preparing this, I was trying to remember that faith was taught last week, and so I have come to hope, because uh, uh, Sister Tamara said to say something, to encourage, I think we all need encouragement in this world, especially the way, the way the things are. I'm not trying to be a... Uh, damn script, but uh, I just uh, glanced at the newspaper today and uh, well the government has said uh, let's hope that we are hope, hope, let's hope that it will not come to pass. Um, by the end of this month they are wondering, they are going to decide uh, whether we are going into a lockdown again. So uh, the hope is there for us uh, that it will not happen. So. Uh, so my subject today is hope. How can we have hope when everything looks hopeless? Uh, how to rejoice in our sufferings by relying on God? I think God is the only person that we can rely on. We cannot rely on anybody else. God is there for us and he will never let us down. In Romans 5, 3 to 5, uh, will Fabian be able to read it for me? Romans 5, 3 to 5. Romans chapter 5 from verses 3 to 5. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Amen. So Paul says that we can rejoice in our sufferings because we are a people of hope. So how can we have hope when everything looks hopeless? In the midst of suffering, we can rejoice because these challenges cause us to rely on three things. Now these are the three P's uh, I have got. That is the first P is uh, rely on God's presence. Second P is God's uh, rely on God's provision and the third P is rely on God's power. So first we will look at relying on God's uh, presence. Rejoicing in suffering does not mean celebrating when bad news comes. No, not that. But it does mean that we can believe that God is doing a redemptive work in us. The word redemptive means that God does not want, does not waste hurt or disappointment. He is using them to shape and build us into the image of Jesus, which is his highest passion. We are told to rejoice in the Lord always. Sometimes it's difficult, but that's the word of God. When we go through suffering, we often pray and seek God more intensely than at other times. 
I think that's the time that everybody is on their knees more often than not. Maybe other times we may not be on our knees. So God uses suffering to make us rely on his presence. In Psalm 23 verse 4, David writes that he does not fear God because God is with him. He relies on God's presence and it brings him strength and comfort. Remember that for there to be a shadow, there has to be a light. I don't know what your valley of the shadow of death is, but I do know who the light is that is walking with you in that valley. In another psalm, David reveals that one of the reasons for his joy is that he is forgiven. What a blessing that is. Psalm 31 1 says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. We can determine God's love for us based on good or bad circumstances. Some people think when the circumstances are good, then God is for them and loves them. Then when the circumstances are bad, then, then God does not love or the, he does not want. God's love is unconditional. He does not do things as humans do. So we determine, we, determine his love, we determine his love based provision on the cross and what he did for us on it. I think most of you get the daily bread devotional. A few days ago I read in that uh, how the Bible talks much about the value of being still. And no wonder for God sometimes speaks to us in a whisper. Remember how God spoke to Elijah in a whisper, not in a loud booming voice. In the business of life, it can be hard to hear him. I think the Holy Spirit mentioned it this morning. But if you stop rushing about and spend some quiet time with him and the scriptures, we may hear his gentle voice in our thoughts. But how can we do this when turmoil is all around us? Every day when you get up, there is something. Psalm 37.7 suggests, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. And then perhaps we'll hear, we'll hear his wisdom speaking to us quiet and steady. So the number, number two P is the rel relying on God's provision. In 2 Corinthians 12, 7, Paul reveals that he has suffered from a thorn in the flesh. God was so concerned about Paul not becoming proud, he allowed this to happen to him to prevent him from being conceited. So in our current situation, God is saying to us that his grace is sufficient for us. And even when we feel weak, he is making us stronger than we have ever been. His grace is not an abstract idea. It is the person of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit the hell you are going through may be the very circumstance God uses to take you to a whole new level. The third P is relying on God's power. Will Fabian be able to read 2 Corinthians 12, 9? 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities than the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. So, what is your weakness? Or maybe my weakness also. Maybe it is a son or a daughter that hasn't quite turned out the way you thought he or she would. A job situation that has gone away from the expected course, a medical diagnosis that has scared you. Anything medical scares every one of us, I think. Maybe like Paul, it is also insults, hardships or persecution. You name it, it is there. Whatever it is, Paul says he will boast in those things because when we are weak, 
the power of Christ rests on us. The, the greater the enemy comes at you, the greater Jesus is in you. Maybe you hear voices telling you to just quit, give up and let it go. Don't stop. When you are weak, then he is strong. Remember the greater the attack against you, the greater Christ is in you. But you have to rely on his presence, his provision and his power. If you want to, this week, take a moment to write down what you are suffering from or struggling with and place it in an envelope. On the outside, just write, God's got this and he is transforming me. Now, when the challenge comes to mind, remember to rely on him. As for any of us in crisis, hope is the, only, is the one thing that's everything. God bless you all.